Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dan Mack, I'm a first year medical student and today I thought we'd talk about some tips and advice on how to pass the GAMSAT. So to do this, I brought my good friend and GAMSAT tutor, Rose. Oh, hey guys, yeah, my name's Rose. I'm a fourth year student here at Nottingham, here to talk about the GAMSAT today. So section three, um, so coming from a science background myself, doing biomed, as some of you might know, um, I found section three a bit easier because it's obviously it's a science section. However, Rose did psychology, a non-science background. So how do you find it coming from a non-science background? Yeah, I would say for lots of people doing the GAMS that like me, um, I was really, really worried about the science section. And I didn't, because I imagine you must have done like science A-levels yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually hated, slightly hated science at school. <laughs> I like biology, <laughs> but I was rubbish at chemistry. I was awful at physics. Um, so I was like, that section three was really, really scary to me. Mm. But Bida, in that section, somehow I got 66 and I was like, oh, amazing. Smash so, it. Yeah, smash yeah. it. Uh, so it's, it's definitely possible, even if you're like, oh, about the science section. I would say doing, because we, we were talking about this earlier, doing the past papers, like for section one as well, but the past paper mm. questions, if you can go through all of them at least once, that, that's yeah. really, really helpful because the, the way that they're asked is really weird. Like, yeah. some, they're phrased really weirdly. Um, mm. so well, that, yeah, sorry. So the way I looked at it, because obviously the past paper questions on the GAMSAT website aren't free, um, I was kind of like, do I spend £15 on a past paper and pass the exam and live the career I want to, or do I not, and potentially risk it? I mean, I'm not, there's no guarantee if you, if you buy it, you'll pass. I'm just saying, for me, I was like, I'd much rather just buy it and know that I put all my effort in, um, Obviously, that's not the be-all end-all. I'm not, I'm not saying you won't get in if you don't buy the paper because you, you can. I just say it makes it easier, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would agree. It is it is kind of worth spending the money because there's mm. Ace of Papers, there's Aussie mm. Man, the, Aussie Man, the Aussie Man and Ferdinand. And I, I went through all of them, like kind of, I, I took quite a long time to prepare, but I went through all of them multiple times and that okay. actually really helped because you, you recognise like the same sorts of questions coming up and you're like, Definitely. oh, I could do this. Um, so I would say, yeah, doing, doing the practice questions. Mm. But actually, people sometimes talk about a GAMSAT syllabus and there's not like a set one. But mm. what I did was I used the um, MCAT syllabus, so like the American, okay. yeah, the American GAMSAT, which is like, um, hard, like way worse than the GAMSAT, <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, we're lucky. <laughs> yeah, like, at least ours isn't that bad. But uh, that, that's actually really, really helpful. So on Khan Academy, they've got question you know you can go through basically any topic that comes up and that's that's really helpful yeah but i would say for like a lot of the gamsat section three and again i hated maths at school but it's actually maths um so mm. i'm quite good at maths now now that i've done it but doing being able to use logarithms like base 10 logs for like chemistry and stuff like henderson hasselback natural yeah. log as well because sometimes or you know rearranging equations that's a really really big one and being able to put you know rearrange it for any variable or yeah. sometimes they'll give you equations and they want you to say oh if this if the radius doubled like in Poissier's law but being able to isolate specific variables so finding ways to do that and also because on the campsite you're not allowed to use a calculator oh really yeah, which, about that. yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so, so unfair but like yeah. yeah so actually what I did was just just calculating everything using scientific notation so if it's you know, like uh, 10 kilojoules or whatever, one times 10 to the three, or if it's like, you know, really tiny numbers, doing, mm. learn how to do calculations in scientific notation, and then it's much, much easier. Yeah. But I would say, say for, uh, for physics, I hated physics, but um, <laughs> I think everyone. <laughs> yeah, everyone hates physics. physics. I hate yeah. physics, and everyone, I still hate physics. Yeah, like. yeah, <laughs> that's the one that everyone's like it. Um, but I, yeah, the physics is only like A level, but if you go over kinematics, kind of the myth mathematical physics so like using logarithms mm. and stuff things like optics so like thin lenses um yeah. the doppler effect snell's law that kind of thing it's mm. sort of sort of an a-level syllabus looking at x-rays i remember reading this horrible question that that used like a natural log and it was like ooh, the absorbance of different x-ray materials mm. and i was like what is this yeah um, great thanks yeah i was like oh god <laughs> but but a lot of it is just math it's just rearranging equations and mm. so in that example you've got like log e to the power and then it was a ratio and the ratio was like um I can't, it was one of the acer papers it was like the ratio of two different absorbances mm. which is just horrible but knowing knowing how to do that would mm. you know just look up some youtube videos 
So I think, yeah. yeah. You don't have to be great at maths, because, yeah, again, it's clinical or critical thinking. So you don't have to be amazing at maths. You just have to be able to see, oh, it's a ratio. I know ratios. Everyone knows ratios. Yeah. By the time you come to Gamma Star, of course you know what ratios are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, so you know what to do in that respect. So, like, rearrange equations. For example, I just made up equations sometimes. I'll just be sitting there and be like, this plus this plus this, and I'll rearrange it myself. Because you don't need to know, like, look up fancy equations and practice rearranging that. It's just a simple basis of actually just rearranging it, which we now use in our degree. Like in pharmacokinetics at the moment, I'm rearranging stupid concentration, quantity over... Uh, oh. Rearrange this to blah, 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 blah. So, you know, it does help in the future when you do get into medicine to learn how to use this skill, I think. Yeah, annoyingly, as horrible as the gamset is, I actually... Because I spent, I did spend a lot of time learning the science and it has been quite mm. helpful and I'm like, oh. I guess it was helpful. But yeah, so yeah, like, like we were saying, rearranging equations, especially when you've got like, um, if you look at the, the Doppler effect, for example, when you've got like kind of fractions within an equation and you've got exponents, it looks difficult, but ju just look up videos on how to rearrange complex equations and that really helps. For chemistry, um, I say for inorganic acid-based chemistry, eh, like yeah. um, Henderson Hasselbach, and that's log-based terms. So, so just being used to how to do that, um, things like, Oh, half equations, Gibbs free energy, equilibrium mm. constant, uh, constants, ice tables, all of that kind of thing, trends in the periodic table, yeah. um, being able to do like oh, quant quantum numbers, or oh, that <laughs> is stuff that looks really complicated and kind of is, yeah. but actually, you know, just, just watching some YouTube videos, Khan Academy is really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then... Because, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's not about if you know all the sciences, it is your critical thinking they're assessing, so you, you can go in with a non-science background, not yeah. know all these fancy things we've just mentioned. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, you can yeah. use that critical thinking. You yeah. Might, you'll be alright, I think. Yeah, so I think, yeah, if you've got, particularly with the maths, like it, mm. if you've got good math skills, then that makes it much easier. Mm. I would say, actually, for like inorganic chemistry, I personally found it, because I guess you, you've probably got a background in that, but I had zero idea. Um, <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it, knowing IUPAC nomenclature, so how molecules are named, chirality, yeah. stereochemistry. Um, enantiomers, that, that, that often trips people up, um, like common organic reactions, organic functional groups, that kind of thing. Yeah. It is actually helpful to know that, because it's not, it's not that complicated once you've learnt it, but if you're in the mm. exam and you're like, ah, oh, you know, like, <laughs> it's good to have the background. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. And yeah. it's a multiple choice, isn't it? Well, it was a mind of it. So, if you know the background a bit, you can still use critical thinking to be like, okay, it's definitely not A, it's possibly not B, it's definitely not C, it's definitely not D, so which one is it, you know, like, or whatever. Yeah, there's a lot um, of, like, just eliminating your, like, yeah, yeah. Look, I've put A recently, I'm not going to put A. No, but, yeah. Um, yeah. So, exactly, it's multiple choice, which makes it easier, but, yeah, I would say for the, for the inorganic chemistry, that's quite useful, and being, um, one thing that they seem to love on the canvas, that is giving you a huge molecule, and then how mm. many chiral carbons are there in it? So, yeah. be, yeah, kind of, like, or those general principles of organic chemistry are yeah. actually quite helpful. I think for the biology stuff, that makes up... So the physics is 20%, luckily only 20%, and mm. the chemistry is 40% overall for inorganic and organic. But then biology is 40% and a, a lot. lot... Yeah, the biology mm. is a big one. But actually, a lot of that is just interpreting like tables, graphs. Um, sometimes they'll give you like really horrible, complicated looking mm. stuff, like, uh, like fetal heart circulation. Um, and it's easy, like when, when you've studied it, you look at it yeah. and you're like, oh, that's very easy, but mm. it, it can look a little bit like, whoa. So it, it's quite helpful to, to look up like um, feedback loops, that comes up quite a lot. Um, mm. You know, like kind of data data and tables. People do say that the GAMSAT is much more about interpreting data now, because I did that's it. That's true. Four? No, probably. Okay. 2017. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 2017. Oh. Oh, three years ago, thank God. Um, but yeah, so it's... It, and with biology, actually, I think be, having a background in, like, DNA and RNA, because mm. they, like, code on... Yeah, genetics, definitely. Like, in my own genetics, and I was like, I've done a degree in this, I have no idea what I'm looking at. So I was, so I used process of elimination, if you, if you haven't gathered. Yeah, so like, yeah, you're like, oh, okay. I was like, okay, yeah, that looks right. <laughs> yeah, cut that one out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely, yeah, like Punnett squares and mm. just be, being aware of inheritance, the Hardy-Weinberg equation, because yeah. a lot of it, again, like Hardy-Weinberg is just maths. Yeah, um, yeah. But being able to do that. But I think with the biology, it's quite hard. They, the biology is, is quite, quite random, or sometimes yeah. they'll give you like um, a model of how like a, an in, there was one where an insect had like um it was like positive and negative feedback loops on how its okay. legs work so 
it's kind of applying broad principles like mm. feedback loops and being able to to do that in the question but i wouldn't maybe knowing cell biology is quite like some organelles is quite yeah, helpful definitely. dna is quite helpful but otherwise yeah just you know looking at biology papers and learning how to interpret different types mm. of graphs is quite helpful oh which will help you with section one <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> they love their graphs um, yeah, yeah. also things like phase diagrams that's oh i missed that out that's more chemistry but that you know anything where they can ask you to interpret a graph or like 3d graphs as well okay yeah i think i think that's quite helpful yeah so you just brush up yeah on the basic concepts and like coming from a science background i, I thought it'd be easy i was like okay i've done biomed but you still need to look up at those basic principles make sure you get what they are um and yeah just understand that and i guess for me the important part to get across is it is about your critical thinking. So when you get there on the day and you're like, oh, I haven't seen this before. I've never seen a feedback loop in an insect's in in leg. <laughs> you can be like, okay, but I do know about this concept. I do know about mm. this. So, you know, just feed it in. So, um, so yeah, I think that's, that's basically it for section three. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash like, smash subscribe. Leave me a comment down below to let me know which tip you found particularly helpful um, and which tips you'd recommend to other people. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to leave Rose's link to her tutoring in the description down below. So go check that out and yeah, catch you guys later. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, probably saying that completely wrong. <laughs>